Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Glad to have you guys here on this September 11th, <laughs> Wednesday. Anyway, you see me remarking about that date, September 11th. And it's a Wednesday. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, glad to have you guys here. Now, uh, this pan, th this if this thing turn if if this turns into a pandemic, it's baby's basically game over. <laughs> I mean, uh, they say a worrying development in the H one five H five N one bird flu outbreak occurred last week in the Missouri. For the first time, a patient was diagnosed with a virus who had not come into contact with sick birds, cows, or other animals. So we look at this. Uh, let me see if I can get this chart up here. We can see how this bird flu is edging closer to human spillover. Uh, in different states here, they're showing that it's spreading to different types of mammals. I'm finding it in bobcats and in rat and raccoons and skunks and foxes and everything else, you know. And, and uh, in Texas, it, it's killed three cats. They caught it, and evidently it spread from cat to cat. It's been found spreading through dairy farm, and it's in the cow milk. Uh, it's it's trying. It's trying to make its way through different types of mammals in the mammal population, uh, not just the bird population. It's really trying to spill over. Uh, but this is a this is extremely dangerous virus. Uh, but we're gonna have to wait and see. It hasn't as of yet. It hasn't done anything. It hasn't started to spread from human to human. It's not. It's it's. But it's trying. It's trying to get. And it is. There is few isolated cases like what I just mentioned about this. Uh, uh, anyway. We got a hurricane developing right now. It's not developing, actually, it is a hurricane. And it's heading toward Louisiana. It's in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, it looks like it's uh, going to intensify somewhat before it makes landfall. So, uh, it's it's I from what I gather it's not a major hurricane but but it it is running into a bit of wind shear in the Gulf of Mexico and that wind shear I guess is going to intensify just before landfall. Uh, wind shear is a nemesis of hurricanes. It, it damages them. Uh, but that being said, still I think it's going to strike and it's going to strike as a hurricane when it strikes into Louisiana. Of course, Louisiana is awful low, you know. That's why they put levees and stuff in, in around in in Louisiana. They have a lot of levees in the mouth around the mouth of the Mississippi and stuff in the Mississippi. Anyway, it's it's a hurricane coming in for that area. Now t now there's a big debate last night, guys. <laughs> Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. And I've been watching excerpts from the debate, and I've been watching people talking about the debate this morning. And what happened in the debate? I probably watched about two hours of that. And the take I'm getting, and what I'm thinking about the debate is, and my opinion on it is that that some debates can do tremendous damage. We saw the last debate with Trump and Biden did tremendous damage to the Biden campaign, and and and, uh, and actually he dropped out of the race. This debate doesn't seem to have done any critical damage to either one of the candidates. They both tried to make their points, get their points across, and I don't think either one did a disastrous job in this debate. You know, uh, will there be another debate? I don't know, but 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 this debate evidently Taylor Swift was watching it. And she said now says that she endorses Kamala Harris for the United States president after Donald Trump debate. And she calls herself a childless cat lady. What does that mean? I don't understand that. Of course, I'm not a real big fan of, of Taylor Swift, so 
baby is some sort of insider joke or something? What is that all about? Calls herself a childless cat lady. I don't understand that. Uh, maybe Taylor Swift fans would understand that better. What that means. Because I don't know what it means. Maybe, maybe, I, I don't know. Anyway, abandoned cyber truck. Now, now take a look at this, guys. This is fascinating. And it goes to show, let me see, let me uh, take it back. Okay, you see there's two vehicles parked here. There's an abandoned cyber truck, and there's another truck parked right behind it. You know, that truck parked behind it looks to me to be about 20 years old. And I bet you it's got like 250,000 miles on it. It's been around the block more than once. And it, it goes, to my old thing I like to say, is they don't make them like they used to. So they made 20 years ago. It's still running, and it could probably drive circles around this Cybertruck, which isn't running. Now, how new is that Cybertruck? They haven't been selling them for about, about a year or less. You know, and it doesn't look like it's in too good a shape to me. It looks all broken down. The wheels all crushed in the back and it looks like the fender's been smashed or whatever and and the the <laughs> it's 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 sitting there in disrepair it's probably only a year old <laughs> but the truck parked right in behind it's like 20 years old and it probably still runs fine what did they cost the truck behind it went it was about a 20 year old vehicle but what did they pay for it new I bet you they only paid about ten thousand dollars for it or maybe 15 back you know what did they pay for that cyber truck what are those cyber trucks going for I don't know is it some an astronomical amount of money what is it I I don't know is it a hundred thousand or something I don't know it's two hundred thousand I don't know what the price of the bus but I do know it probably paid a heck of a lot more than they did for that truck that's parked behind it so if you get down to the essence of what driving's all about and what what transportation's all about and what cars are all about they're all about getting you from point A to point B forget about style forget about bling forget about uh, all that other stuff. Get Let's get down to the essence. What is a car really about getting you from point A to point B? That's what it's really about. So what kind of job did those two vehicles do? You know? I bet you that Cybertruck hasn't got the miles on it. <laughs> I bet you it's only been around the block. Of course, they probably, that being said, they probably treated it pretty darn rough. Uh, you know, I've seen some of these guys out doing shows on YouTube and stuff, and they got these new cyber trucks, and they're just beating the heck out of the thing, really putting it through its paces. You know, so maybe that was what happened to this. I don't know for sure. Anyway, silver price today is up 11 cents. You know, I got a bad feeling, guys. I really do. I think it's extending toward these war situations out there. I just got a bad feeling that, that it's all's quiet on the Western Front right now. But I just got a bad feeling about it. I got an especially bad feeling that I'm thinking that they're going to give Ukraine permission to use long range. I think, I, I don't know for sure. But I'm just saying that's what I'm thinking they're going to, probably. Pressure's coming on them to do it. and Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they won't. But I just got a bad feeling about the whole thing. The whole kit and caboodle. How you got two superpowers right now coming to loggerheads. And neither side plans on backing down. And it's over an issue that's as big as the world itself. Is... Who controls the money for the world? It's all about money. And they're not going to let go of this. They're like a bulldog. They're like a bull... Both sides are like a bulldog that has got a hold of something. And he, he's breathing through his nose. And he ain't going to let go. Kind of what it's like. 
The silver price twenty eight fifty one. I remind you guys that all these weapons of war require silver. All your electronics out there now require silver. People are not going to stop. They're going to continue using silver. And we're running into deficits every year. And it's just a matter of time until those that deficit eats up all of the available supply and they're only able to work then with the supply that's coming directly from the mines. They'll be anxious to get it. And that's what the deficit is. They're not producing enough to cover the total of everything that they're using. So, let's just say, for instance, that they produce a thousand million ounces a year or whatever. They're using 1,200. They're using 1 million too. They're using a little bit over every year. Um, and that is not going to be sustainable for very much longer. They must have had some put away someplace. I've heard stories. I've heard that they've been dipping into different vaults of silver that were stored in it, it all the way back in very old stuff and they're smelting it down and stuff. I've heard stories like that. I don't know how true they are. Now, cryptocurrency today, you know, we're looking at Bitcoin at 56,898. And Ethereum at 23.31, and XRP at 52.9 cents. Now, all three of these markets, the gold, silver, and the cryptocurrency markets, are all going to get a boost soon when the Fed starts to cut rates. Now, I thought they might drop 50 basis points. It's looking more like it's going to be a 25 basis point, the first cut. And I don't think the first cut's going to be the be-all and end-all, but once they really start to get entrenched in this and they're cutting like every month or every two months or something and their pattern starts to develop and they're on their way back down to zero. In other words, once this starts to get really going, it's going to really do well for these three markets, gold, silver, and cryptos. So look forward ahead to a bull market coming in this stuff, I would imagine. And uh, and I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see how this whole war thing develops. I don't think it's going away. The, the, right now, Russia is in China and stuff. They're out there and they got their, their ships on the ocean right now and they're practicing and stuff. And it almost seems to me like, hey, you know, uh, we're in a period of time right now where I don't think that Russia and China really want to react. They're pushing against them, and it's, it's like they're, it's like they back off. It's like uh, you got to understand, Iran is connected into these, and so is North Korea. It's all connected into the to the bricks where you got your China and you got your. Uh, North Korea, and you got Iran, and you got Russia, and I tend to think that they all kind of have a uniform plan. They have something planned, or whatever. And right now, they do not want to get mix. They don't want to mix it up right yet. The United States, maybe they know that that they don't want to mix it up right now. But I think they're waiting for something. God only knows what they're waiting for. But I don't think that I don't think it's that they're scared to fight. They want to fight. They will fight. But it seems like they're waiting for something, waiting for some action to happen or something before they pounce. You know, and uh, so you got that going on. I just I just got a bad feeling about it all. But I don't think it's going to happen quite yet. But I think it's imminent that these wars are going to escalate into something that is going to probably frighten us when it happens because it's going to probably happen fast when it does happen it might be a few months from now because the problems the underlying problem that's making this all happen is not going away like I say it's dominance of the global financial system and right now 
If you picture it like like a game of football or something, they got the ball. <laughs> the United States and the Western Allies, they're holding the ball. They got the ball, but they don't intend on letting it go for anything. And that's the power over the world's financial system. They got the dominant currency. They got the they've got the whole ball of wax basically. And they've been using that for a long time to dominate control. It's 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 almost like an empire. You know, and and like the Roman Empire, all the other countries on earth had to pay tribute. Well, the resistance is here now to this. And we got half of the world as a resistance against the other half of the world who's, who's d dominating the finance. But the other side, they want their share. They want it, and, and, and they don't want to let go of that because that has enriched us over here in the West tremendously and you'll find out that if that goes down and if the east wins and they they put us into the position that they want to put us into it's going to have a negative effect upon each and every person's lives that lives in the western world or the western hemispheres of the world over here a very negative effect because we've enjoyed that privilege a luxury for years and years, ever since going back to Bretton Woods, we have enjoyed that privilege of being the world reserve currency. Being able to print our money off on a money printer, spin it, spin it off, buy real goods and products around the world with that money. We just come, it's so hot off the printing press that the ink is coming on your fingers. And they'll actually take it for their good stuff. They'll give us stuff. And we give them that, what we just printed from thin air from nothing. If you don't call that an absorbent of privilege, I don't know what a privilege is. When that privilege goes away, suddenly we're going to find ourselves over here very poor. And that's what they're fighting to maintain. They don't want them. They're, they're, this, this is a fight over it. They're gonna, who, who's going to have this absorbent of privilege in the world, you know? I don't think anybody should have the absorbent of privilege. I, I think that wouldn't it be a wonderful idea if the whole world was unified in trade so that we really did have absolutely free trade so that countries could just, they didn't have to worry about tariffs or anything else. And even ordinary citizens wouldn't have to worry about any of that stuff. Wouldn't this, really, it would simplify things, wouldn't it? If if there was no wars anymore, and the whole world was just open completely to free trade, wouldn't that be great? You know, I, I think that things would run and operate so much smoother. Because this is a carry down from our primitive roots going back like when we used to... All these countries that we have and their sovereignties and everything else is a carry down. If there are aliens out there... And they were capable of getting here from where they were. Let's just say there's aliens. Say there's aliens out there, and they're capable of flying like five light years to get here. That means they're organized. How are they organized? Well, they would not have all of these different little countries wanting their own. That's not organization. That's destructuring. That takes away from productivity. That causes... People to fight over resources and stuff like that. All these sovereign nations and stuff. If you just have one... And so the aliens out there, in order to get here... From, that means that they would have had to be productive in order to fly 40 light years through space. So it means their planet is unified. It means that they're not fighting over resources. They're, they're working together. They're not a bunch of idiots like us here. A bunch of territorial idiots who are out there trying to always get for number one. Instead of getting thinking for number one all the time, they're probably unified. Otherwise, they wouldn't have had the technology to fly across space. It, it, that just makes sense, doesn't it? As far as I'm concerned, it makes a lot of sense, you know. And, and so we we got to get productive. And what does that mean? Leave, means leaving off all these traditional little things when we used to be tribes and we used to fight against one another and bloodthirsty raids and everything else. That's what primitives do. 
we're still acting that way. Essentially, you know, I mean, it's countries. Yeah, it's countries and a little bit bigger than tribes, but it's the same thing. They're all putting their war paint on, beating the war drums. That's stupid. It takes away from everything that we have. It wastes our resources. And, you know, and, and it's like Reagan said, you know, he stood up there in front of a big crowd at the United Nations and he said, uh, what if, he said, there was some other alien race or something out there, you know, he said about, this is what Reagan actually said, you know, and he said, what if, he said, wouldn't that bring us together? I, I Maybe I'm not wording it exactly like he said it, but he said, if there was an alien race out there and isn't there one out there already or something like that, it, wouldn't it bring us all together, uh, like, instead of all us bickering and fighting all the time? This is the exact same point I'm trying to get across, is why? This is stupid. It wastes our resources. It wastes our, it wastes our productivity. It, it, even different languages, for crying out loud, all these different languages slow us down and affect our productivity. And I know how all these things got started, you know, I mean, it's how our civilization slowly was built, but we, it's time we left all this stuff behind because it's all negative and it all, it all hurts our productivity. Time us for us to get over it as a species and not carry these things forward into the future because we're getting weapons now where we can obliterate one another. It's not like back when we used to create a spear and chuck it across the field at the other guy. That didn't do any damage to the earth. Now we don't chuck a spear across, we chuck an ICBM and when that thing goes off it, it can destroy the earth. We got that capability now. We got to wisen up. We got to sharpen up. Anyway, how did I get into that rant? <laughs> I didn't mean to, guys. It's just, it's just, it's frustrating watching us go in circles and go in circles and go in circles. And if there is aliens out there, for crying out loud, they'll take advantage of us while we're going in circles, chasing our own tail. It's, I mean, you ever watched a dog chasing his own tail and you think, oh my gosh, how stupid is him? <laughs> you know, look at him spinning around in a circle, chasing his tail. That's stupid. Well, that's what we're doing. Stupidity. Incorporated. Well, bonds. Uh, well, our market today, the Dow is down 481 points. S&P 500 is down 42 points. So the Dow stands at 40,255. And the S&P 500 is at 54.52. Uh, and we got our crude oil. It's up today, up a dollar forty-six at sixty-seven twenty-one. Our bonds and rates today. We got climbing yields. The ten years risen one basis point, and it stands at three point six five. And the U.S. thirty years risen a basis point, and it stands at three point nine six. Rising yields, I should say. Did I say fallen yields? No, rising yields today. So we got rising yields today. They've basically, the long end has risen a bit, one basis point on the treasuries. Uh, 101.68 for the dollar index today. And the dollar today is going up. Uh, it's risen five, five pennies. Or, or 0 0.5 percent. Uh, so 101.68. Thank you guys for listening to my show. Like and subscribe, or become a member to the channel. And uh, really appreciate you guys out there. And we'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye bye.